Hello everyone, today I will be reviewing a streetcar named Desire. A Streetcar Named Desire was directed by Ilya Kazan and stars Marlon Brando and Vivian Lee. And this film is based on the play of the same name by Tennessee Williams. In this film, we really follow Vivian Lee's character, which is Blanche Dubois. And Blanche Dubois, she moves to New Orleans in Louisiana and she moves in with her sister Stella and Stella's husband Stanley. The place where Stella and Stanley live, it's a very small apartment. It's, you know, very compact and claustrophobic and a bit um, run down, I suppose, is in a bit of a rough part of town. And we see their neighbours are very close. They've got people upstairs that they talk to all the time and everyone's always moving around quite a lot. And Blanche Dubois is meant to be quite a very sophisticated character from a wealthy family, a bit like her sister Stella. So Blanche finds it quite difficult adjusting to this new area and she begins to realise that the relationship between Stanley and Stella is a bit difficult at times and very up and down, very all over the place and that Stanley as a character is very aggressive and very abusive and doesn't treat Stella very well. But then Blanche seems to realise that every time Stanley lashes out at Stella, Stella forgives him really easily. So Blanche has, Blanche does not have a very good relationship with Stanley in this film. We later see Stanley starts to find out secrets um, about Blanche that Blanche would rather people not know. And things develop from then on. Um, I'll start off by saying that this film has got some seriously, seriously good acting talent in it. So we've got Vivian Lee as Blanche Dubois, Kim Hunter as Stella, Carl Malden as Mitch, and obviously Marlon Brando as Stanley Kowalski. And those four actors actually were all nominated for an Oscar for this film. So this had four acting nominations, which is, you know, quite incredible, really, often unheard of, really. And so Vivian Lee won the Oscar for Best Actress as Blanche Dubois, Kim Hunter won the Oscar for Best Supporting Actress as Stella and Carl Malden won the Oscar for Best Supporting Actor as Mitch. But amazingly, Marlon Brando did not win the Oscar for Best Actor for playing Stanley Kowalski. So the film came out in 1951 and the Oscar for Best Actor actually ended up going to Humphrey Bogart in The African Queen, which apparently was a good performance. Um, I haven't seen that film yet, but that's one I will watch at some point. So anyway, yeah, the actor is very good. I think Marlon Brando really started something new with this film. He really started um, the method acting process where he really falls back into his character and lets it flow naturally and almost becomes the character. And this is one of his best performances. Um, this film is often compared to On the Waterfront because both On the Waterfront and Street Named Desire, they're both directed by Ilya Kazan and they both star Marlon Brando. And out of the two of them, I probably would say I do prefer On the Waterfront, although that's not to say this film is bad. I think this film is very good. The way it's filmed is very clever, actually. So most of this film, it really just takes place in the room in the apartment where Stella and Stanley live. But obviously, you have to remember this was based on a play. So obviously, with a play, they're not going to they're not going to have a lot of different locations anyway. So in this film, there is a brief scene at, at a bowling alley and um, a place where Stanley works. But really, apart from that, most of it is just in the confinement of this building. It gives this really compact and claustrophobic feel, which is obviously how Blanche Dubois is feeling most of the time about the situation. What I do like about this film is that um, quite a lot of the actors that are playing the characters in this film, they also play these characters in a Broadway production of a street called named desire which ran in the late 1940s i think it was 1947 to 1949 really the only major actress or actor who who wasn't from the broadway production is vivian lee who plays blanche in a broadway production blanche was played by jessica tandy but apart from that all the actors marlon brando kim hunter um carl malden they all played their respective characters in a Broadway production of a street called Desire. So, you know, that's almost unheard of nowadays. You don't normally get that. So that just really probably is 
one of the reasons why the acting is so good. All these actors know their characters so well, and it really just shows in their performances. They almost literally become their characters, and it all just links in together very well as a film. Another interesting thing about this film is that when it was released, they had to cut a few things out because of the production code at the time. So the version that I've got on Blu-ray and DVD over there that actually includes the three minutes extra, which were cut out. So in 1993, they added the extra three minutes back in. One of the most iconic scenes in this film is after Stella and Stanley have a bit of a scuffle, have a bit of a fight. Stella runs upstairs to the neighbor and then Stanley walks outside and he shouts out, Stella! upstairs and then Stella comes back down and originally the the shot was with Stella walking down slowly towards Stanley to show her basically forgiving him but they they, they cut out some of the walking out so it's um, so it's sort of a lot of the tension is lost in it and it's sort of just um seems a bit quicker because when she's walking slowly it almost as to the sexual undertone of it it really sort of um yeah, it seems, seems very sexual. And this film does does almost ood sexuality in a lot of ways, particularly with Marlon Brando's character, because when it's first introduced, he's sort of is wearing quite a tight t shirt and he takes his t shirt off and it's obvious that, and and it's obvious that Blanche Dubois is very attracted to him. And it's often mentioned quite a lot during this film that everything is very hot and sweaty. So that sort of adds to the sexuality of it. Obviously at the time they had to tone things down. There is a scene where it is implied that Stanley rapes Blanche, but we don't actually see the rape, obviously, but it's implied. But even in the indie version, when they cut things out, it, um, a lot of that scene was completely cut out. So you don't even get that implication when the bit is cut out. So it's quite nice to see those bits that, that are added back in. Obviously, they had certain censorship laws with the production code. Um, yeah, you have to really watch it to understand what I mean. But, yeah, so overall, I did really like this film. I thought performances are very good. Um, the only real downside, I suppose, um, some bits are a bit boring, particularly with maybe Blanche's, Blanche as a character. She does talk quite a lot. It did seem a little bit like she was repeating a little bit of what she was saying, but in a way, that's sort of what a character is meant to be like. She's almost a bit like Norma Desmond from Sunset Boulevard. She's very deluded and almost caught up in her own mind and not really focusing on what's going on around her. But anyway, I have to watch it to understand what I mean. So I am going to give A Streetcar Named Desire a rating of 9 out of 10. And I think you should definitely check this one out because it's a very good film. So yeah, let me know what you think. So there we go. So that is A Streetcar Named Desire. So have you guys seen it? Do you like it? Do you dislike it? Please let me know what your thoughts are on that. So thank you all very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.